<coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, from uh, from absolute perspective, I have no capacity to suppress karma. Karma are if are their own, and I'm of my own. I mean the soul. I'm of my own. Karma are of the of their own. So I. But when we talk karnaniya perspective. When we talk from karma perspective, then we use the word "I suppress the karma." Now, what happens when karma gets suppressed? I have certain changes occur within my soul substance, and I have this soul substance has an absolute purity occurs within my soul substance, and at that time, correspondingly, karma in the form of nimit nimitik samban they will get suppressed. So, in in Karnanik perspective, we'll say that I suppress the karma. So, on the back of our mind, we have to have understanding that karma I don't suppress, but they do of their own. I do my own, and they too have the nimit nimitik seven principal cause auxiliary cause relationship. <clears throat> so, those are the things that we have to keep in mind. Now, what happens when karma gets suppressed? Then the then the purity generated, <coughs> which lasts for a <coughs> very short time. Once that short time is over, then the karma fruition comes up again, and this mithyatva means wrong belief, deluding karma comes in the fruition again, and at that time it gets divided to this three part: mithyatva moniya karma, samyakto moniya karma. And Mishra Moniya Karma. Three come, they three come in fruition. <clears throat> Suppression was one unit only. When it comes in fruition, it comes as three different entities. It were if the predominantly mithyatva monia means wrong belief deleting karma are, are uh, principally present there, then soul goes to first gunstana. If the right belief deluding karma are coming in fruition, then soul goes into kshayapsham samyakdasha. <clears throat> and when clouded right belief means a misramonia karma comes in fruition, then soul goes to second gunstana, and from second it goes to first. So the second gunstana remains very transiently. <clears throat> There's also third gunstana comes. Third gunstana comes in which the, the, the miracle. Miracle. Yes. Okay. Um, we started this discussion by saying that darshan mo is suppressed yes. and there's anubha. Yes. And then you said that if mithyatva monia comes into the if mithyatva monia res. Um, Surges, then you go back to one, and so on and so on. Here's my question. Here's my question. From the ex and I, maybe you can answer this. I don't know. From an experience point of view. Yes. Is there any difference for the person who's experiencing it between uh, Atman above with the suppression of all three versus? Atman above with the experiencing of samyatma. Okay, yes, okay. Means, is there any difference in experiencing with the upsham samyatva or kshayapsham samyatva? Yes. <clears throat> okay, no, there is not. Exact same thing you experience. <clears throat> the experience that is Siddha Bhagwan is experiencing at this moment right now. Or Aryan Bhagwan is experiencing the experience right now. One experiences exact same experience because because the faith attributes directed to the eternal soul substance. So my experiencing phase when I'm engrossed into the soul substance, that experience is exactly same as what Aryan and Siddha Bhagwans are experiencing. Only thing they have forever same experience continues, and for this soul it is transient experience, and so that transient experience only for the same quality as the Orient and the Bhagwan. <clears throat> and that's why, 
that's why when he comes out of the experience, he said, wait a second, you know, what, what happened to me? I, mean, I was going perfectly okay. Why did I come out of these things? So let's say that that soul now goes back to Mithyatva. He already has experienced a soul and he said, that's the one I would like to go back to. That's the one I would like to go back to. And so all his personal efforts, all his Purushats are directed towards re-experiencing that one. So even if he's in Mithyatva, that Mithyatva is very short-lived. Let's so then that kind of then that kind of then that kind of soul. Yeah. Even if even if it experienced upsham samigdarshan for like like five samays, like a, a very small amount of time. Yeah. You know, that soul will never forget. Forget about the soul. That soul in that life, I would think, will never forget it and will do everything that they possibly can. like. You know, when you like, you know, if, if you go to a city and you eat a slice of pizza and you really like it, that means whenever you go to that city, all you'll do is go there yes, and nowhere yes. else. And so I would think that if the soul experiences this, even for a fleeting moment in that life, the rest of that life will be dedicated to nothing else but trying to get back there. That's called Vyavar Samyatva. Okay. Because now all his effort, that's all, he's going crazy right now, quote unquote crazy. Because that's all I want, that's all I want. I mean, a, a person falls in love with a girl. Girl is not present, but he's constantly thinking. He could be working in the hospital, he could be working in the office, he could be working in the bank. He will be doing all his activities, but in the back of his mind, constantly he's thinking about his loved one. Same way here, no matter what he does, his constant urge to go back within and so all his, all his efforts are directed that way. He has no other interest in the life. For example, uh, uh, Kupaludev, when he was doing business, he was doing a, 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 a jewelry business. And one time he asked, I think Devchanji Muni or some, 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 one, one of the Muni. And uh, Kupaludev said, Muni, when you're giving lectures, when you're giving your pravachan, would you be able, if the, if, if, if there are women too, right? He said, yes. Do you end up seeing them? And Muni said, yeah. Then bro, they said, then your sadhu panu, your, 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 your sadhu panu is gone. It's useless. So this Muniraj also was very intelligent. So he says, so who you are to tell me that Krupa Rudev? You are also doing this business of, of, of diamonds, I mean, of, 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 of pearls and everything. So why you are giving me this kind of advice? Kupal, they say, listen, I'm doing that business, but I don't have a one cent of interest in that one. So Kupal, they wanted to go within, but by, by default, he has to do the business. He has to get married. He has to have children. He has his mother, father, and everything. So all those things are still there, but his constant lounging is, how can I go back? How can I go back? How can I go back within me? I mean, when he was doing business, as soon as there is nobody there, right away he'll start reading scriptures or end up writing something. This is kind of a... Feeling that one gets it. <laughs> so well, then, 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 all you know, all these munis and all these sadhus, you know, if they've experienced this, then what they're doing is easy. It's it's the easiest way to stay close to themselves. It's the easiest way to focus on themselves. It's the easiest way to make sure that all their efforts are directed inwards because they don't have to deal with any of the nonsense that anybody else has to deal with. Well, physically they don't have to, but if, if your intentions, my God, look at that. This guy is a cell phone, this guy is TV, this guy is a computer, I can't have access. And if those kind of attitudes are there in his mind, then he's constantly thinking about that one. And who am I or who you are to say that this monk has a Samyak Darshan and that monk does not have Samyak Darshan? No, well, I'm not saying that. Here's what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, okay, let's, and, and 
I guess we're going off track here, but I think it's it's a worthwhile discussion. If let's say tomorrow, or like in an hour, I have Atmanubo, I experience myself. Yeah. Okay? Let's just say in an hour for one summer or two summer or four summer, I've experienced myself. Yes. Then you know it's it's the most amazing experience that you could ever have in the entire universe. Yes. So once you've experienced that, everything is nonsense and garbage to you. It's meaningless and it's a waste of your time, and you know that. Yes. Now, in my case, so I have absolutely no responsibilities. So if if I was that person and I had no responsibilities and I experienced that. Listen, I've never been in that position, so I can't really say what would happen, but I would think intellectually that I drop everything and I run away and I go someplace where nobody, nobody's going to find me, nobody's going to bother me, and I can spend every last waking moment of my life to get back to that point where I felt that kind of pleasure. And, Am I wrong? And that's what, that is supposed to happen to everybody, but remember, as you already answered your question that I don't have any responsibility, but... You still have, for example, I, I, and we are just uh, taking example, don't take anything personally, but it, 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 I, for, let's, let's say, okay, I have the experience tomorrow morning. Now, can I run away? Well, I, 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 I on the line, but she was telling me, she raised this question to me. She said that her kid, I can't believe I was following Buddhism and now what you are telling the real nature of monk and everything, the Buddha, Gautam Buddha, he left his wife and kids. He had responsibility. How can he leave them while they are sleeping and he runs away? He has responsibility. He, he married with his own will. He had a child. And so how... So those are the things. For Mahavishwami Bhagwan, for example, as the story goes, in the, when the parents expired, then after Mahavishwami told older brother that I would like to take monkhood, and the brother said, you know what, um, parents just passed, would you please wait for a year or so? And Mahavishwami said, yes, I will do that. Because he fulfilled his responsibility. So you are also having your response, whatever responsibility you may have, you can run away tomorrow, no problem. As long as you, whatever responsibility you have it to create your family's unit and everything, you try to fulfill their desire, fulfill their requirement, I mean, you know. So those are the things that even staying in the household, Krupalu, they stayed as a householder, and he still continued his sadhana. Whenever the time permitted, he ended up going with it. Remember the last words Kuparudev spoke before his uh, separation from the body. What did he say? In the morning of the day, Chaitra uh, Panchmi day, day, he told his brother Mansuk Banu Dhyan Rajya. That's the last word he spoke, and thereafter he went in samadhi, and in the late afternoon he left his uh, uh, mundane, uh, mundane body. So he, was also, he was also samsari. Yeah. So, you know, that's his job. He has to, well, he has to do those things, otherwise he's not a samsari. If he didn't do those things, he's a muni. Yes. So, so, so your question is why somebody should not increase his personal effort and just go back within in that's a question right yeah my question is that if you've experienced that and you realize that everything is a complete waste of time like you know people go out of their way to take the fastest route to their destination because they know they're going to waste they're going to save time they're not going to waste time and they're not going to create inconvenience for themselves yeah. my question is if you really experience it and maybe, maybe some people experience it before they run away. Some people experience it after they run away. I don't know. Maybe it's both. Okay. But if you, let's say you experience it before you run away and you're in the middle of nonsense, utter nonsense. I would think that, you know, in addition to the understanding that, wow, this is a waste, you would have some sort of inclination, some sort of drive, some sort of impetus to say, you know what? I'm cutting my losses. I'm throwing my hands up. And I'm, I'm making my plans to move on. Goodbye. When that, that's what it happens, whether you do externally or whether you do inter internally, he already has done that part. That soul internally, he has done it. Goodbye to everybody. Now, whatever responsibility I have to finish it up, 
I will do it, but I have no part of those things. And he will remain in Sansar, he will remain with the family unit and everything, but he will remain kind of totally aloof from within. And I'll give you one example, what does that aloofness mean? Aloofness means you are, let's say I'm working in a bank and I'm counting millions and millions and millions of dollars every day. Do I make mistake? No. Do I have opportunity for those dollars? No. They are not mine. So why should I be careful? Well, I'll be careful, but I'm detached. They are not mine. My thing is only at the end of two weeks, whatever paycheck goes in my account, that is mine. So he does complete work, but he's totally detached. Same way, this person in the sansar, in the family surrounding, will do complete responsibility, whatever he or she has it, but internally that person is detached. So this detachment starts as soon as you have one or two or three or four semester experience, that detachment already has started, even though you are back into Mithyatva. Okay. We take the example of Tupaludev, that he had a Samyak Darshan, he was in the uh, 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 Mahavishwami Samosaran and everything, and with he and up all the way to 11th Gunstanak, the suppression ladder, he took it, and from suppression ladder from 11th Gunstanak, soul definitely does fall down, and ultimately he came all the way down to 1st Gunstanak. And this was 2500 years back, passed by, and now he obtained again some meditation in this life at this 24 year of age. So that means he was born at one and he stayed at one until 24, and then he rose to four and he stayed there. Is that, is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. Okay, so, so, Shimaji, Shimaji yeah. after he fell from 11 onwards, all, all the way down to one. He, he was born at Gunthan 1, correct? Yes, Gunthan 1, yes. And he, he stayed at Gunthan 1 until age 22. He's or whatever, 24, whatever it is. Yeah. And then when, he, then when he experienced himself, he rose to the fourth Gunthan. Yeah. And then if, if you're saying that he stayed, did he stay there for the duration of his life? Yes. Well, what and that, that must have been Shad Samik Samik Yes. See, I mean, now, uh, P. P See, we have to see this, this, the, 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 the sentence you spoke from two different perspectives. What we are talking from the perspective, from the Karnani Karna Yoga perspective. And some people, they become very uh, emotional and they look from emotional perspective. What Krupalu, they wrote down that in 1947, Sambat 1947, I obtained pure Samkit, Samyak Darshan uh, experiencing. So people say pure Samkit means Kshayik Samkit. Now that could be Shayik, that could be Upsamik as well. Right? Yeah, actually, it was only Upsam. Because Upsam, remember as I said, dirty water you took, you put alum and all the dirt is sitting down and pure water is there on the top. That is called pure Samkit also. It lasted transiently, but after he came out of the things, he's probably his right belief deleting karma came in the fruition and he became sharp some Samyak Darshan, continued thereafter. Okay. And how long it will continue? Well, it can continue short time or long time, but that quote unquote long time means nothing. What nothing means? He is from infinite amount of previous lives and everything. Now that he has come almost to the shore and that shore can take one life, two lives, three lives or whatever. And then he's gone, he, 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 that soul options and liberation. So did he have a shaykh samkit, chav sam samkit, option samkit? Didn't he bounced around for a long time after he first... That soul bounced around for a very long time, right? Uh -huh. but very long time means, according to me and you, when we, we compare the time from our perspective, but when you're looking for infinite times that we have passed by in the past, 
compared to that it's not even a droplet of a water in front oh. of the ocean the droplet is a minuscule part of the water that time is left for this person to obtain liberation for example i'll give you another example that five pandavas are there and they are doing their final meditation and they are on a satrunjay mountain that's a palitana and while they are in deep meditative phase they are in sukla dhyan already at that time duryodhan means pandavas cousin brother duryodhan his nephew came and said these are the five pandavas they make my mama lose the war so i'm going to take revenge so he has all the ornaments the 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 he made the ornaments of the iron and put it in a hot furnace and this hot iron ornaments he put it on all the five pandavas three pandavas yudhishthir bhim and arjun they were so deep meditative phase they have no idea what is happening sahadev and nakul remaining two they were also in deep meditation they felt this ornament this is the hot red hot ornaments on their body what they said what will be happening to my brothers that's a, that's only one vikalp one reflective thought came to both of them not for themselves for somebody else for their brothers those three brothers they did not come out of the meditative the sukladya they went to moksha and these two brothers because of this short one vikalp only one reflective thought they end up going to uh, sarvat siddhi they will be staying there for 33 sagropam and thereafter they will be going to moksha okay so to us it's a huge a huge time wise but when you are looking for the infinite time that you pass by 33 sagropam is not in a droplet of a water in front of the whole ocean so those are the thing that we have to keep thinking that once once i have experience once you have experience we are we are sure to get liberated no matter what sometime it takes time rushab dev bhagwan it took 1000 years mahavishnu bhagwan it took 12 and a half years malinath bhagwan it took one year and bharat chakravarti it took only antar murat only two gadi only 48 minutes only so time can vary it doesn't make any different i am going to get liberated now because i am the right track because i experience myself that's all remains there now okay then here the let me ask you this now yeah i don't you know I, I'm, not causing, i'm not trying to cause problems but i'm just I'm, I'm no curious. no it's okay you have you have to have clarity so no problem how can you have deep and strong vairagya yeah without something special without something you know some purity some experience something that guides that vairagya you know, i'm talking about i'm talking about mudras i'm talking about these deeply deeply elevated so you know. yes yeah. remember uh, kun kun swami lived for 90 years he was in six and seven gun sthana his personal efforts were quote and quote not strong enough that he did not get liberated this time and he ended up going to the um, heavenly life now you mean kun kun swami has a less interest in the moksha and everything he has exact same interest but everybody's personal efforts and load of karma is are they are different and so as we say different people have different time frame so it is like you are running the marathon the first guy finishes in 2 hours and 4 minutes and you finish in 2 hours and 6 minutes 2 hours and 7 minutes 2 hours and 10 they all finished so that's all it counts what when happens what happens why it happens why it gets delayed you are there you are because karma science is so specific that whatever karma comes in fruition if i get joined in that one i bind the new karma and all those things are predetermined from the karma perspective 
and from the from the soul's perspective too. Does it make sense to you? I mean, I mean, this was the same question we had last week, and uh, you know, it's it's good we had a clear understanding of the of the of, uh, what we are talking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the when we said that the, the soul goes. To, my, my um, thing is not working so good, so I have to just go on this way. Okay, let me try. Hopefully, this will work now. <clears throat> okay, so now, same scenario here. And what happened? This is the first good sthanak I'm in because all the deleting karmas are present. When I'm on the same scenario, but right belief deleting karma means wrong belief sub subgroup of wrong deleting karma right belief deleting karma clouded right belief deleting karma they are gone plus infinite bondage producing means anantanubandhi krodh man maya lobe are gone that means i'm on fourth gunsthana that means this experiencing phase occurred whether it could be upsham means transient whether it's a kshayopsam, means last time for a long time, or with a kshay, which is going to stay there forever. We are not working, we are not talking about what type of guns, what type of samyak darshan is it. Samyak darshan is there. That's all we are looking for, fourth gunstana. I have experiencing of my soul transiently or remaining forever, but I have that experiencing occurred. That's a fourth gunstana. What happens in fifth gunstana? Same scenario plus partial vow preventing passion karma are gone. And so I'm on a fifth gunstana, means right now the soul is called Shravak. He's called householder. He is on the path to the uh, uh, elevation. He's on fifth gunstana. Now, I call you as a Shravak, you call me a Shravak, that is conventional uses of the form, but in general, when we say Shravak, means from Karnanya perspective, that person is on fifth Gunstana. What exact thing happens and everything, we, can, we will talk later on when, when, that, talk, when, when that subject comes, but right now, our perspective, what happens in fifth Gunstana, these many karmas are gone. Right belief deleting karma, infinite bonded producing karma, partial vow preventing um, uh, passions, uh, they are gone. So the soul is on a fifth gunstana. Now, same scenario, but even total vow preventing passions are gone also. That means soul is on sixth and seventh gunstana. The purity is now much, much more. On fourth gunstana, the literature says that person will get experiencing of the soul every four, three to four months or whatever. When the person in a fifth gunstana, on an average, he may get experiencing of the soul about every two weeks or so. And when he's in a sixth and seventh gunstana, constantly throughout the day, but in innumerable time, he will keep. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you said that when you said that when there's this shayap shamik samik darshan, yes, it's, conti it's continuous experience. Yes, no, no, no. Hold it, hold it. The shayap samik darshan means the person has experience of the soul, and now he continues his samyaktva. When the samyaktva is going on, he can still be doing householder's duties. He can be doing auspicious, auspicious activity. He could be doing inauspicious activity. But, but in the back of his mind, constantly he knows that I'm doing this one, but they are not supposed to be done by me. It is just like the person coming from the very high noble family and he goes to alcohol place and he starts drinking alcohol on the back of his mind he constantly says i'm doing with this with, with my weakness i'm not supposed to do it same way he has a experiencing the soul occurring every two weeks every 
three months, every some uh, uh, every day, so many times, depending on what Gunstanak is. But when he's out of experience, he still has weakness to get uh, 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 join in his karma fruition. When he joins in karma fruition, he says, this is not, I'm supposed to do it. But my weakness makes me do it. And so I have to uh, my, uh, increase my in personal efforts intensity that much more, not to be in those auspicious or inauspicious phase. I would like to stay within my true nature only. So experiencing comes, experiencing comes in two phases. One, I'm mean, just saying, is two phases. One, experiencing phase, and one, without experiencing phase. If if one one of us gets conversion today and thereafter gets converted to shop shamik conversion, means if we are on the fourth gunstanak only, we will get experience again in three to four months time. This is general statement that it may not be true for everybody. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, I understand. So, that, so, so we, drew the, we drew the distinction between experiencing and not experiencing. No, yeah. 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 While I'm in experiencing phase, the, the, the real experience, when I'm in the primary abstract comprehensive nirvikal dasha, that's yeah. right? But yeah, But when I'm out of nirvikal dasha, I still know that I have a samyak darshan. I have to be staying within, within also. But I'm being pulled outside. And at that time, for example, Kunkun Swami, let's take his example. Kunkun Swami, when he comes out of his experiencing phase, he's experiencing, then he's out, he's experiencing, then he's out. Constantly throughout the day between six and seven Gunstana, he keeps on moving. He keeps on so while he's outside of his of his experiencing phase, then he says, I don't want to get involved into my inauspicious activity. So what will I do? I, I, I would like to get involved a lot more into auspicious activity. So inauspicious has no place in my life at all. So he will say, I will write the scripture. Or I will discuss the scripture to my, 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 uh, my fellow beings, my fellow munis and my, my Sravak and everybody. So he tries to remain, but constantly he's lounging to go back within. So when Kun Kun Swami is out of his experiencing phase and to stay away from the inauspicious activity, he ends up writing scripture. Thank God he did for us that 25, 2000 years down the road, we have all those things available. While he was worrying about it, he didn't want to stay in that state, but because his effort was not that strong enough to stay within his self also, only. Mahavi Swami took 12 and a half years to remain non-stop experiencing phase for 12 and a half years. Non-stop experiencing phase for 48 minutes. That's why we do Samaik for 48 minutes. We do the imitation that what will happen when I'm monk? Can I remain in equanimity state for 48 minutes? Those are the things. So rituals have a deep-seated meaning if we understand. Your uncle? Yes. Okay, say say a soul is in the fourth Gunthana, but is not in Atmanubha. Yes. Outside of Atmanubha. Yes. yes. Is, is there a, does that soul experience Anantanubha the Asra? Yes, because, no, he doesn't have Anantanubha. Because remember, yeah, very, very smart question you're asking. Um, this this slide, I'll just throw it one. Uh, this slide, let me bring it. This one. Okay, this one. That he is, this soul has a Samyak Darshan occurred. So these guys are gone. When it's gone, means gone. So even though he is doing worldly activities, he's not binding infinite bonded producing karma when he's on a Kshaksham Samyakva or Kshaik Samyakva. So he will do the activity, but he will have the bondage only for partial vow, total one, perfect conduct preventing passion only. And these are so weak karma 
99% of the karma bondage are gone when infinite bondage producing karma are destroyed. So it, that's why it says when a Samyak Darsi Jeev, he is eating and laughing and doing, doing the regular activity. And Mithyatvi Jeev, he is who is doing he is doing right now upvas and everything. So this guy is laughing and enjoying the life, and this guy is not eating, fasting, and all those things. Mithyatva gunstana, mithyatva gunstana. So every summer he keeps on binding infinite bonded producing karma and rest of the other karma too. The samyadarsi jeev who is eating, laughing, joking, and all the things, and you said, wait a second, what is happening to him? He is binding karma, but they are partial vow, total vow, perfect vow, conduct preventing passion, which is extremely feeble in nature compared to infinite bondage producing karma. Uh, Kiranko? Yeah. So when, when you're in experience, is yeah. everything X'd out? For the, let's say you're let's say you're Uksamik Samik Darshi Darshan, yes. and you experience yourself for two sunlays or two point five or whatever, three sunlays. Yeah. For three sunlays, is everything X'd out? No, no. They they are suppressed. But what is happening now in the experiencing phase, okay. My God, you know, you, you are really, really thinking really deep and beautiful. I'm, I'm so happy, so happy. What is happening in experiencing phase? You are asking me while he's in the experiencing phase right now. So infinite bonded producing karma are gone. Even in Upsam, remaining at present, partial vow, total vow, perfect vow, conduct preventing passions are present. And they kept on operating. And as a result, soul subclinically keeps on doing certain thought process, which is beyond this soul's intellect to grab that one. While experiencing is going on, Whatever he is in fourth gunstanak, fifth or sixth gunstanak, whatever gunstanak he is on, he has remaining karma are still operating within. And as it, when they are operating, the soul subconsciously gets attached to those karmas fruition also. But the soul in the experiencing phase, he has no capacity to, to feel that he is binding the karma right now. So that's why, that's why it says that experience of the Samyak Darsi Jeev at 4th, 5th or 6th, 7th Gunthana or Siddha Bhagwan is saying, but, but the difference is, for example, a blind man is eating sugar and a person who has a two strong eyes are, is eating the sugar. What is the experiencing difference between those tastes of the sugar in both the people? Experiencing is same. Only thing, blind person cannot see the sugar and the, uh, the, the person with two eyes, he can see the sugar. That's only seeing wise, knowledge wise, there's a difference. But experiencing wise, there is no difference. Same way, this just, just soul on the fourth, fifth, or seventh gunstana, he is experiencing and experience is same as the blind man getting the sugar taste versus the uh, uh, versus the uh, 13 and 14 uh, i mean uh, orient and siddha bhagwan getting experience is a la, uh, 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 person with the two eyes experiencing sugar so that's that that is only the difference experiencing is the same does it make sense yes Okay, and these are very, very, very deep, 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 deep meaning. And you know, because Karnani Yoga is specific, there's no if, and, or buts. It says, I'm on fourth Gunstana, means I keep on giving fruition to rest of the karma, whether soul wants to join or not. I don't give, I, I don't worry about it, but 
I keep on giving fruition. When the fruition is there, soul gets joined subclinically. Medical word, right? We have to throw some medical. Subclinically, soul, which he cannot, the soul in the experiencing phase cannot grab that subclinical uh, attachment. But it does it happen. So he does get a karma bondage, even in the experiencing phase. But we're very subtle, very subtle. Because these guys are very subtle thereafter because they are very, very minimal because 99% 90, of karma bondage is gone when infinite bondage producing karma are gone. So these are the things it's very understand. We have to have some basic because if we don't understand this part, if we don't understand this part, then we are, one second, hold it. So, so we have to have some understanding of Karnani Yoga when we are doing Dravyana Yoga also. Because that becomes very important for us. Okay, any uh, uh, next question? I'm okay for now. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, all right. So, as we say, the, this is the fifth Gunstana, then this is sixth and seventh Gunstana. Now, now the monk from sixth and seventh gunstana ultimately goes to eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's called separation ladder. He's climbing that ladder, or eight, nine, ten, and twelve ladder, which is called elimination ladder. Bear with me with the names. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Suppression ladder, 8, 9, 10, 12 is an elimination ladder. So soul on a six, uh, later part of the seventh Gunstana, he decides which ladder I'm going to climb. So if he goes to suppression ladder, he gets stuck on an 11th Gunstana. And from there, he ultimately falls down. Ultimately means after Antarmurath, he falls down. 8, 9, 10, 11, it also takes Antarmurath to reach there. From 11, within Antarmurat, he is going to fall down. He'll fall down and may get, may, may stay at the sixth, maybe fifth, maybe fourth, maybe one, depending on certain situation. And the soul on the later part of the seventh Gunstanak went to elimination ladder. So he goes to eight, nine, ten, and twelfth Gunstanak. And that also occurs in Antarmurat. On 12th Gunstana, all the Monia Karmas, are, let's go one more thing here, so, so that way it makes sense. All these things are gone, that's the end of 10th Gunstana, everything is gone. And now comes uh, 12th Gunstana, now comes the elimin uh, uh, elimination ladder or suppression ladder in which all the deleting karma are not operating. In the suppression ladder, they are transiently not operating. In elimination ladder, they are totally gone. So in the 12th Gunstana, all the deluding karma are gone and that soul is called Vitrag. That also lasts for Antarmurat. And once that Antarmurat is over, that soul will go to um, uh, 13 Gunstana, he will become omniscient lord because now he has a pure knowledge also. And from that, now he's coming to this is the 13th Gurthana. What happens in 13th? Yoga is still operating. And so there's a vibratory capacity of the space point of the soul are still going on. That's why I call Sayogi Kevli means he has a physical body, mind, and speech are present. And so that's called Sayogi Kevli, that's called Aryan Bhagwan, that's called uh, 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 Tirthankar Bhagwan. So once this part is there, once the, once the soul ends up with the uh, age determining karma, and then ultimately he goes to the 14 Gunstanak, which is called Ayogi Kevli. 
in which all the space point of the soul space point they become now stationary so there is no yog remaining so what we saw up to 12th gunstana uh, deluding karma are predominant 13 and 14 gunstana yog is predominant and 14 gunstana onwards the soul is a, is the adobe of siddha he is a pure soul remaining karma free remaining pure remaining forever in his super sensuous bliss and omniscience knowledge forever and ever and ever and ever so this is the way gunstanak work so how did we end up with all this kind of thing um, we already talked this one so so, so goes to 14 uh, so this is like. now with limitation of language coming back to our stanza right now limitation of language guru cannot explain the eternal true indivisibility nature of soul substance without any divisions because there is a limitation of language and so experience soul like kun kun bhagwan experience soul like tirthankar bhagwan experience soul like gautam gandha there is a language limitation an experience soul of the some, somebody like a guru that he cannot explain the true nature of the soul without taking support of divisions divisional aspect so what happens here in actuality in actuality there are no divisions in infinite attribute residing in the soul substance only with the spoken words one can explain the indivisibility in the form of division we have to take the support of division if you know i have the house i have the guest house i have the kitchen i have the bedroom i have the living room i have made the division to have you understand how my house looks like okay so i gave all the description to you about my house but you still don't know what it is now you just say but still tell me what's your house well i explain i explain to you as much as i can there are more windows then more views and i can see sunset and so what to really understand my house you have to come to my house you have to experience my house then you know what i was talking to you same thing uh, our acharya bhagwan says our enlightened monks says our enlightened guru they say gurudev sakanji swami says Kun Swami says to us that you know what we are talking to you about this soul's experience and everything. What is soul made of? If you don't understand, if you like it, come down and experience yourself. Take it deep into this water. Sitting in the bank of the water, you won't feel the coolness of water. You want to feel how cool water is. Dive inside. Gurudev one time was talking. Kanji Swami was talking. And he is in a great mood and talking and talking, and at that time, uh, 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 what is his name? Um, uh, the one who is uh, translated all this uh, uh, Shah. Mahendra uh, Shah. Huh? Mahendra Shah. No, 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 no. The the person who was with Gurudev, he translated oh, uh, Himad Bai. Himad Bai Shah. Himad Bhai Shah, he translated all the scripture into Gujarati with the uh, 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 poem and everything. So he said to Gurudev, he said, Gurudev, when you're talking, it appears you're eating some sweet and experiencing the sweet. Gurudev said, Dabba is open. You can come and actually, you can also start eating these sweets also. It is not my mine only. Anybody can eat. In the sense, you also experience. Actually, Gujarati word, the, the, uh, uh, what, uh, what he said, that uh, Gurudev, aap jare bolo shane, tiyare jane, dabba mati khaja nika, khaja kaadi ne khata hoi, evo amne laage shake. So Gurudev ke, dabbo khullo chhe, tamhe khaja khao mando. That's why, so translating is becomes, it just loses a charm, but that's what it is. So, spoken words, one can explain in, explain the indivisibility in the form of divisions and remember this is the central theme coming in this stanza again and again and again indivisibility 
explained in the form of division. What's the heart of seven stanza? This is the heart of seven stanza that one has to understand the indivisibility from the from a scripture which shows the divisions. Ignorant soul has never experienced the indivisibility nature of the soul, so he is been explained in the form of divisions only. I did not experience my soul, so Acharya Bhagwan says, "Okay, I'll explain to you. Do you do that? Do you become angry? Yes, sir. Then anger is not the nature of your soul. Do you become egoistic? Yes." Ego is not the nature of the true nature of the soul. And like that, whatever I experience from that negative perspective that they get, so I'm not an ego, I'm not a deceit, I'm not a greed, I'm not a, 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 a anger, deceit, ego, greed. So who am I? And Gurudev says, come within, experience, and then you know who am I. I tell you everything from negative perspective, which you day to day you experience those things. Anger, diso, deceit, e greed, ego, you experience that one. That is not your true nature. So this is the way Acharya Bhagwan tries to explain to us. <clears throat> Let me take this thing off for a while. Uh, explanation, explanations are done in division, but one has to understand them in the indivisible form. And uh, that's what we are talking all the time. So any questions so far? Because this is the thing, we covered a lots of things and uh, I'm, I'm glad that there are lots of questions also raised because this Karna Yoga is a very special breed. You have to, it is extremely microscopic. It, literature says Dravya Yoga is very easy to understand. Karna Yoga, it takes real, real intellect to understand all this intricacy. Okay, any questions so far? If none, then we'll start closing maybe. Here at all, next week will we, uh, uh, are we almost done with seven or do we have almost, more to do? Yeah, I think we'll be, we, this is a tail part of it. We are almost there now, you know, so next week it should be done completely, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Kiritanka? Yes. I missed some connection. This last slide, how does that connect with all the things with the Gunstana? Gunstana. It's just that, that um, an omniscient Lord cannot explain the Gunstanas. Is that what it is? Into, like what was? Okay. Omniscient Lord cannot explain in the words about the experience that he's getting it. So he says that once you experience, then I said, okay, I experience, then what? Then he says, once you get experience, then there's a ladder to climb. And that's a gunsthanak ladder you'll be climbing. Ultimately, you'll come and reside next to me forever. So he's not able to articulate all the things about the gunsthanak. Is that what you're saying? He cannot articulate the experiencing phase of gunsthanak. Okay. Rest okay. of the things, yes, you know, I'm angry, I'm doing a rag, I'm doing dvesh, I'm doing ego, all those things are experienced. But the experiencing phase I had never experienced, and he tries to teach me what it is. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll do closing. Javani ke sovani mastaka namo sada deta no bana mukha mantra. Thank you.